Okay, so this is the first video for Unit 6, Acid-Base Equilibria. We are going to spend a little bit of time reviewing the Chem 111 concepts of acids and bases and really get into some more of the details about pH. Depending on who you had for Chem 111, this may or may not be uh, new to you. And so if it is, just make sure you're doing your reading. We'll go from this uh, idea of pH to the concentration of H+, and then we can plug that into our equilibrium expressions the way we have been doing for the last few um, units. We'll get back into the Lachantier's principle by discussing common ions, and then we're going to talk a little bit about buffers and titrations. So we're going to start off with the general definition of acids and bases and get into pH and pOH. Now, in Chem 111, you heard that acids donate an H plus to solution when they're in water. Bases tend to be um, OH minus donors. That's the Arrhenius definition, and it's really only part of the story. Bronston Lowry expands on that definition by saying acids are any substance that donate a proton. And if you think about H plus, this is atomic number one, so it's got one proton. Plus charge means that there's no electron and there's no neutron in this. So this is essentially a proton. Um, now, by expanding to this definition, it allows us to also talk about more things than just hydroxides as bases. Things like ammonia, for example, in water can accept a proton from water, one of those, and you're going to be left with ammonium and hydroxide. And so now we have a relatively uh, new type of base. Now, the other new concept here is the idea of conjugates. So for example, if we look at hydrofluoric acid in water, it is a acid, or it's an acid, so it's going to donate this proton to the water to allow this water to become the hydronium ion. Now over here, um, the HF component acted as an acid. On the right, this F minus is now called the conjugate base. On this side, water accepted a proton, so it's behaving as a base. Once it has accepted that proton and become the hydronium, this hydronium ion now has a proton that it could re-donate back, and so it is going to be the conjugate acid of water. And that's an important, I don't know how I did that, um, that's an important concept here because we're going to use the relative strength <coughs> of acids and bases to talk about the relative strength of conjugates. Um, now, technically, our equilibrium expression is going to be exactly the same as it has been all along. We do not include liquids or solids. We only include aqueous and gaseous compounds. Now, here's the thing. Our strong components for an acid, that means we have HCl, HBr, oops, HI, nitric acid, H2SO4, and HClO4 perchloric acid. These are all of our strong acids. Our strong bases are any group one metal plus hydroxides. Anything else is a weak substance. Now, if it is a strong acid or a strong base, it completely ionizes, or at least ionizes almost essentially, so we tend to talk about it in a one direction. Something like HCl does not sit as HCl. You get all H plus 
and all Cl minus, um, it completely ionizes. These are strong electrolytes. These are substances that are um, very willing to break apart or dissociate in, in solution. Now, once they've broken apart, broken apart, this chloride came from a strong acid. It no longer wants to go back into the molecular form. Instead, it would rather sit as this ion on the right. So anytime you have a strong acid or a base, it's going to yield a weak conjugate, meaning it's going to want to stay on that left. I mean, stay on the right. I'm sorry. Um, when you have a weak acid or a weak base, something like, let's go with HF. HF will partially ionize, maybe something like 5%. I don't really know. Um, and so you tend to have more on the left than on the right. So that means that this conjugate is a relatively good base. It's a stronger base um, than we might anticipate. It is going to quickly react to try and get hydrogen to take back to the, um, to the left. These are also weak electrolytes and um, Overall, they want to be molecular in form. So a strong acid is going to completely ionize. Whatever you add is going to completely ionize to give the same amount of each of your ions. A weak acid or a weak base is only going to partially ionize. So you get something like 5 or so percent down here that's ionized. The rest is in its molecular form. So here's a really good flashcard slide that we talk about in class. It allows you to kind of look at the K value, um, how uh, equilibrium adjusts and so on for um, our weak and our strong acids. Oops. Now, we've talked about acids and bases. We can also have substances that will behave as both. Water, for example, is amphoteric, which just means it can be um, either an acid or a base in behavior. So for example, water can donate a proton to something to yield a hydroxide, or it could also accept a proton to um, become the hydronium ion. Either way, is, um, it, it, it could happen. And so um, because it can behave as an acid or a base, it's really kind of a unique substance, which is awesome. Equilibrium for water, you're going to have H plus times the concentration of hydroxide. Water is a liquid, so it is not included. So our K for water, or the equilibrium expression for water, which we call KW because it's talking specifically about water. It's going to be the concentration of H plus times the, con I mean, times the concentration of hydroxide. It gives you a K value that is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. No matter what, this is the K value for water. So because of this, if we know the concentration of either of these, we can actually find the other since we have this constant built in. And so we can kind of look in terms of how water behaves. Water is going to very quickly, um, it will occasionally ionize, but then it will very quickly go back to its neutral form. This is the molecular form. It is the one that is most stable. It's what it prefers. So just because it can self-ionize doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Um, it also implies the concentrations of those ionic forms are going to be relatively low. Now, just to kind of reiterate, hopefully you heard all of this in 111, but if not, um, it is on your formula sheet, and it should be uh, relatively easy to kind of pick and choose what you need here. 
pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen um, H plus concentration. Because this is a log scale, every time the concentration changes by a factor of 10, uh, it goes the pH only adjusts by a factor of 1. Um, 1, 2, 3 is going to be a tenfold, tenfold scale each time. Um, it really gives us a way that is pleasant to report numbers as opposed to writing out a lot of zeros and um, scientific notation here. Now, pH decreases as H plus increases. So for example, for a one molar H plus concentration, negative log of this is going to be zero. 0 0.1 molar pH is going to be one. If it's 0 0.01, pH is going to be 2, and so on. Make sure you're using the right number of sig figs. This is incredibly important for the lab more than for me, but it is really um, a good idea just to make sure you're following that practice when you're here. Now, if pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration, pOH is going to be equal to the negative log of the OH minus concentration. P of anything is always going to be negative log of whatever else it is. So if it's the PK, it's going to be the negative log of the K value, that kind of thing. Now the other great thing about this uh, type of relationship is that the pH plus the pOH always equal 14. There's not going to be a situation that you will encounter in this class where that is different. Um, we tend to stick to a pH scale of 0 to 14 in um, 111 and 112. If your pH is right at 7, it's going to be neutral. Um, the only thing that's really neutral is pure deionized uh, water. Everything else is going to be slightly different. Um, if your pH is bigger than 7, you have a basic or an alkaline solution. If your pH is lower than 7, you have an acidic solution. Here's kind of your pH scale. Um, this is pretty much covered in your reading, so I'm going to glance over this, but the idea again is acidic pH is going to be on the low pH end. Um, basic pH is going to be really between 7.01 and 14. So let's calculate the pH for these solutions. Here we have 1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar H plus concentration. Pause this and please try it on your own first. Um, and then hit play. pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus. So we're just going to plug this value in here and say pH is equal to the negative log of 1 times 10 to the minus 4 which is right at 4. We could also take this a step further. If we know pH, and we know that pH plus pOH is equal to 14, 4 plus pOH equals 14, subtract 4 from both sides, pOH is equal to 10. By the way, guys, there is more than one way to answer virtually any question on this unit, which is both awesome and highly frustrating, depending on how you view it. Um, it means that you don't have to think in a certain way every problem, but it also means you have more choices. So if you're indecisive or less than <sighs> sure of yourself, you're going to have a harder time seeing what to do for a problem. So my recommendation is to keep going with the practice until you really think you have it down to a level where you could start to explain it to a peer. Now, the pH for this guy. pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration. We don't have that. We have the OH minus. So we could do one of many things. We could take this and find our pOH and then use pH plus pOH equals 14 to solve. Or we could do something completely different. 
Um, I'm going to keep on the same path for right now just because I want to make sure you kind of uh, see this. Uh, so POH is a negative log of the hydroxide. Now if we take the negative log of 0 0.04, there we go, um, hydroxide, that is going to give us um, 1.39 POH. Then we know that POH plus pH is equal to 14. So we can subtract that 1.39 from both sides. And you get something like 12.6 is equal to your pH. Oops. Here we have pH of a solution is 5.85. Oops. What is the pH, excuse me, what's the H plus for this? Well, we know that pH is equal to negative log of the H plus. We have 5.85 equals negative log of the H plus concentration. Now, we can solve this. The first thing that we need to do is multiply both sides by a negative 1. So negative 5.85 is equal to log of H plus. Now on your calculator the anti-log is either going to be like 10 to the caret or mine has 10 to the x, it just depends. So you're going to take the anti-log of both sides. It's the anti-log of negative 5.85 and you should get something like um, 1.41 times 10 to the negative 6. And because it's concentration, it's going to be molar. Now, in addition to doing pH plus pOH equals 14, we can really talk about Kw itself. Here we've got Kw is equal to the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of hydroxide. We know that this is also equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14, because I, I tell you. Um, so we could actually take the negative log of everything and say the pKw is equal to pH plus pOH, which is why 14 is equal to pH plus pOH. Um, we actually just did that, so I'm going to skip this slide. Now, a second ago, we found the pH of this solution to be 1.41 times 10 to the minus 6. Oh, excuse me. The pH is 5.85. This was the hydrogen ion concentration. What's the pOH? Or what's the hyd hydroxide ion concentration? Again, guys, there are so many ways to solve this as long as you are looking for the right thing in the long run. To me, Kw, we already have this value. Might as well use it. Kw is equal to H plus times OH minus. This is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to 1.41 times 10 to the minus 6. Oops, not 16, goodness. Times the hydroxide. We're going to divide both sides by this 1.41 times 10 to the minus 6. And your hydroxide ion concentration is going to give you Seven point we'll go with seven point one for space reasons times ten to the negative nine. And that makes sense. Um, 
mathematically anyway. So we ha should have uh, the right answer. So what's the equilibrium constant expression for an acid in water? Well, just like anything else, the K is always going to be products over reactants. Here, we're only going to consider the aqueous substances. We do not consider a liquid. So here's our acid equilibrium expression. Hydro hydronium times the concentration of A minus, or our conjugate base, over uh, the concentration of HA. Just like in other units, if it's a right or product-based equilibrium, your K value should be very, very large. And if it lies to the left, meaning it's reactant-based, your K value is going to be very small or at least smaller than 1. Um, here we go. Now, if water is a better base than A minus, are the products going to uh, be more favored or less favored than the reactants here? So, water is a better base than A minus. Stop and really think about this for a minute, guys. Hit pause, please, and just consider this. If water is a better base, what it means is that it is going to grab a proton much faster than this A minus will, which means it's going to push the equilibrium to the right because it's going to have stolen this proton, and it's going to give a product-based equilibrium. In addition, it means that water is a stronger base, so this weak base had to have come from a relatively strong acid. Remember, it's kind of the opposite relationship. If it's a product-based K, we know that it has to be a K value that is greater than 1. Now, in addition, excuse me, we could also look at really ranking acid strength based off just looking at the conjugates, okay? Now, here we've got the conjugate from H3O+, plus, conjugate from HA, and conjugate from HCl. If we talk about strongest to weakest base, we know that this is a strong acid. So hands down, it should be the weakest base. Agreed? Then you just have to deal with these two. The question is, which is going to donate the proton faster? Water or HA? Now, really it's a hydronium or HA. Now if you look at it, we know that this is a terrible base. And we know that this is a relatively good base. And that's because this is a weak acid. It wants to be in this form. And so we can kind of say, based off that, that the strongest base is going to be A minus because it wants to be in that molecular form. Then the hydronium is a little bit stronger than HA, followed by HCl. So this should be the order of the bases themselves. Now, um, actually, this is the one, isn't it? I have all of the logic here. I want to kind of get into um, a little bit more detail about how we're going to treat this. 
Um, I'm going to let you guys go through the explanation. I don't mind answering questions on it, but I don't want to just read from the slide. And that's where we're basically headed. Now, if we're talking about acid and base strength, oh no. If we're talking about acid and base strength, we can really kind of carry that into some numerical calculations to kind of verify what we're seeing. And that is what we are going to do um, next, but that'll be in our next video.